I love Weird Al. I absolutely adore him. He was my first musical idol when I was a kid. Like one of my first cassette tapes, my first musical introductions was Weird Al's Bad Hair Day. I played it so often that even my dad knew all the words to it. And we all know and love his straight up parodies, right? Like Amish Paradise, Eat It and Fat, Smells Like Nirvana, White and Nerdy, the list goes on. But for me, I love those pastiches, those el those tracks that weren't necessarily a straight one-to-one -one parody, like the ones that I just mentioned, but those that were in the style of a particular band. And I even remember a number of times playing Weird Al, like full albums, and people being like, well, I know, I know this is a Beach Boy song, but I don't know which song it is that he's parodying. And I kept having to say, it's not a parody of a single song, it's just in the style of a Beach Boys track, and the track was Pancreas. Um, or somebody saying, oh, I know this door song. This is 100% a door song. Why? Uh, it's just not coming to me. And I kept having to say, Craigslist isn't a Doors song parody, it's an homage to it, it's a pastiche, it's in the style of. So... Yeah, I am going to champion 10 of those tracks where I feel as if Weird Al actually did a better version of that band. You know, it's it's one of the best tracks that the band has never written uh, because I really feel like this is where Weird Al's talent shines. This is where he's able to incorporate what makes those bands special, like finding that signature sound and then recontextualizing it and making it his own. Here in my mind <clears throat> are 10 times Weird Al wrote a better track than the original artist. And yeah, we're going to start with probably my favorite track from Weird Al. Uh, this is coming from his Bad Hair Day album with Everything You Know Is Wrong in the style of They Might Be Giants. We all know They Might Be Giants, nerd rock, very big in like the late 90s and early 2000s. And Bad Hair Day came out just as the band was really starting to get up and notified. Very quick, very fun, very witty, and Weird Al is able to channel that witticism, that speed, and that uh, con consistent kind of tempo work within Everything You Know Is Wrong is an absolute standout. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. I absolutely love it. I still know all the words to it, even though it's so fast and so breakneck in pace. Uh, and be, being able to write and record a track such as this is just an absolute, like, astonishment for me. You know, like, it, it would be hard for a band to really nail down this sound and then continue to perfect it over years and years of time. To have Weird Al come in and do it on a single swoop, just outstanding. So that one is probably one of my favorites, but uh, yeah, it's it's still one of my favorites Weird Al songs. And yeah, he wrote a better They Might Be Giants track than anybody else. Uh, another one came out on the album that uh, succeeded Bad Hair Day, which was Running With Scissors. And that was the track Germs, with uh, kind of in the style of Trent Reznor and Nine Inch Nails. You know, we're looking at tracks like Closer, we're looking at tracks like um, anything from the Downward Spiral era, uh, really utilizing those beats, that kind of industrial soundscapes, and uh, not quite techno and not quite metal, but somewhere in between, uh, starting off with a very soft singing style, and we have Weird Al coming on, and the whole subject matter, of this being germs, you know, where we're all crawling with microorganisms that for the end of the day actually help us out, you know, and they groom us and they help us with fight diseases and help us stay clean. But also the note that, yeah, these are organisms. These are sentient live creatures that are crawling all over our skins all the time. Uh, and just all these germs everywhere. And there is something that is so creepy about that and having that being relayed in this Trent Reznor style of vocals where it starts off very somber, very quiet, very soft. But then once we get into the chorus, we have this explosion, this anger, this angst, this mm. And again, it's that balancing act that Nine Inch Nails really loves to do that Weird Al is so able to challenge the chat channel uh, and get right onto the page. So not only did it match method with form, but it also matched form with the actual uh, kind of song comedy of the track as well. 
Now we move on to a newer track. This one came out with his second last album on Alpocalypse. Uh, and Alpocalypse has some of the best pastiche tracks on the whole thing. And that is with Skipper Dan in the style of Weezer. Now, I've never really been a huge fan of Weezer. I know a lot of my friends growing up, they loved Weezer. But I just found like they were either not heavy enough or too aggressive all in the same time. This took the fun aspect of Weezer that I actually do enjoy. I do like Weezer's very tongue-in-cheek writing styles. I love their more poppy approach to the grunge expression of music. It took that and then left aside a lot of those sharp edges, a lot of those really gnarly teeth aspects that I'm not a big fan when it comes to Weezer. I'm not a big fan of their more harsher guitar styles that they sometimes use. Some more of those guttural instincts that I'm not a big fan of uh, and applied it here to a very dark track. Like it's one of Weird Al's darker tracks, but you have to kind of much like a Weezer track, listen to the lyrics that are going on here. Because on the surface, it's a very bright, bouncy, fun track that's all about, you know, this skipper that's on the jungle cruise ride at disneyland and just kind of his day-to-day -day activity but when you get down into the actual lyrical content it's about this failed actor it's this individual that had this massive dream of making it big on either broadway or being in a tarantino film that then gets his dream crushed after so many countless actors out there and then having to settle for a day-to-day -day soulless job but at least it's in his field at the jungle cruise ride at Disneyland. So at least he's still a performer. At least he still gets to perform every day. But, you know, here he is talking about, oh, look at those hippos wiggling their ears. There it is, the backside of water. And it's soul grating, you know, it's so demoralizing. It's, wow, I have become a failure and I'm barely making it by day to day. So much like a Weezer track in that the music might be fun, might be very energetic and bouncy. Some of those underlying themes are quite dark. So once again, we see Weird Al knowing what really channels within those songs, not, over, not only musically, but thematically as well, and applying it so well to this track. So the next one, I'm kind of cheating a little bit. These are two tracks in the style of Peter Gabriel. And both of these tracks found their way onto Alapalooza, the one that had D Jurassic Park being the big track, a parody of MacArthur's Park. And both of these tracks kind of take a different Peter Gabriel essence. And both of these tracks, I think one of them was actually meant for a different album and it just didn't kind of pan through. Uh, and we're talking about Talk Soup as well as Waffle King. Uh, Waffle King more in the style of Sledgehammer, Talk Soup more in the style of Steam. But both tracks, I feel like Sledgehammer, uh, well, I guess Steam is much more a follow-up to Sledgehammer, you know, and... So I'm kind of, it's kind of interesting that both of these tracks made their way on here. And I, you know, if Weird Al was my first love, then Peter Gabriel is definitely my second love in terms of musical artist and kind of idol of mine. So seeing how Weird Al is able to channel that very accessible, poppy, late 80s, early 90s Peter Gabriel in these two tracks is very, very interesting and ones that I really, really enjoy. And Talk Soup originally was for a, a show, I believe, called Talk Soup and then just The Soup or Talk or something like that, where it would just kind of kind of be like a roundup of all the different talk shows and all the different like weird stuff that are going on on those daytime television talk shows uh, and kind of distill it into uh, like a TMZ quick rapid fire kind of thing. Uh, and this was originally going to be the theme song for that and it just didn't get chosen, but Weird Al still had and wanted to do something with it. Uh, and yeah, Waffle King having those very signature sledgehammer flutes at the very beginning, but having that driving rhythm section as well. Uh, both of these tracks really do showcase that very accessible, very poppy Peter Gabriel outlook. Uh, and I love that with Talk Soup, I, I keep going to Talk Soup because in my mind, Talk Soup is the better track. It's a lot more fun. I love the build up near the ending of it. Uh, and Waffle King is fine. I mean, the overall thing is like, I make the best waffles ever. That's kind of it. That's the joke. But Talk Soup, like Peter Gabriel in the next album that you would do of Up wrote The Barry Williams Show, which is very similar to all those tracks in The Barry Williams Show being one of those talk shows. So I do wonder if this is like a continued conversation within the art that Weird Al and Peter Gabriel having within their musical stylings. So that was just something I kind of had in the back of my head. Um, both of these songs, perfect Peter Gabriel tracks, and they could have landed either on us or so perfectly. So 
yeah, love both of these tracks. Underrated track for Weird Al. And one that I was blessed enough to play, and when he started playing it, I was like, holy jeez, he's actually playing this track live, uh, is his homage and pastiche to the Talking Heads with the track uh, Dog Eat Dog. Uh, and you can definitely hear that. You know, you can definitely hear the call and answer aspect to it. Once again, it's very quirky. It's very fun. Uh, that's one thing that I really do love about Weird Al is those albums and those artists that he chooses to do these pastiche things with are always the quirky, the strange, the weird, the kind of touching the peripheries of the musical landscape, because those are the kinds of music that he wants to do. Obviously, he'll do the big parodies of the big popular tracks, but then he'll do these pastiche with those bands that he admires and loves. So seeing him do Talking Heads with Dog Eat Dog, and Dog Eat Dog being a very mundane office kind of take on it, very similar to how the Talking Heads would do that kind of a track in more of like a modern living landscape of like, this is just my modern life. I don't even recognize it anymore. I've lost track of where I was going. This is very similar, but in a kind of a corporate world, uh, in a, almost like a pre-office space kind of take on the corporate America, you know, saying like, this is my stapler. This is my mug. I love them more than life itself. This is what, you know, gets me through the day. I can't wait for a jelly donut. And taking that kind of like very mundane aspect and elevating it to almost like this sacred ritual is such an interesting take. And again, Talking Heads is doing something very, very similar. So once again, we see Weird Al taking the idea and the, the essence of what these bands are doing and knocking it out within a single track is absolutely amazing. Uh, then we get to uh, a, an early track from him. I believe this was from his second album of um, Weird Al in 3D, uh, which is the B-52s and his track Mr. Propale. Uh, sometimes you just want to have a stupid, fun track, and that is exactly what this is. You know, B-52s being that very fun, very like surf rock. Mr. Propale is essentially just the infomercial track. Uh, and Weird Al would do a couple of these, but I really do enjoy this one the most. Um, and it's just got that that very fun singing style of the lead singer of uh, the B-52s with the backup women chorus on there. Uh, and I love where it's just like, don't answer yet. Look what else it has, you know, and things like that. Or I guess look what else you get because uh, it, it rhymed. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love this one. You know, it was a very early one for him and one that I was kind of debating about putting on this list, but one that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed and loved was uh, the closing track from, I believe it was uh, Off the Deep End. Um, it was either Off the Deep End or even worse, which is You Don't Love Me Anymore, which is a, a takeoff of almost a singular track with James Taylor and uh, Nicolette Larson. Um, and the actual music video itself parodies the big music video that this goes for. Now, it's not a one-to-one -one parody, but it's almost the closest that Weird Al gets within these kind of pastiches, where You Don't Love Me Anymore is this very sweet, solid ballad um, that's very much in the style of James Taylor and Nicolette Larson. The music itself is very soft, very somber, very, like... Uh, late 80s, early, two early 90s, almost duet kind of a thing. Uh, but it's all these signals and signs that just get more and more ridiculous of this person very clearly not loving this other person and almost getting to the point where like there's like, there she's almost out to kill this guy. You know, saying that you left a cobra in my underwear drawer. Um, you know, why did you disconnect the brakes on my car? Like she's actively trying to murder this person. It's just kind of being played off as, you know, I don't think you love me anymore. Uh, and so it's just, I don't know. When I was in high school, I adored this track and I would listen to it over and over and over again, not just because it was hilarious, but also because the music itself, it's its so disconnected from the actual soundscapes itself that I couldn't help but love. So yeah, I think probably one of his most famous pastiches is with the track Dare to be Stupid, uh, which was an homage and a pastiche to Devo. And it was actually featured in the Transformers movie, which I always love as a little bit of trivia. Um, it was the only track I believe that actually led an album, Dare to be Stupid, uh, even though, you know, Like a Virgin is the main single 
off of here with Like a Surgeon. Uh, but yeah, Dare to be Stupid is one of his bigger hits in terms of the pastiche, and it is a direct call to Devo, you know, and the entire music video is just Devo reference after Devo reference after Devo reference. Uh, but the actual mu music itself, much like I was talking about Talking Heads with Dog Eat Dog and They Might Be Giants with Everything You Know Is Wrong, this is that very quirky, very fast paced, very off the like rock and opposition, very strange and kooky aspect. Like if Weird Al went just into making his own original music, this is kind of the music that we would be getting from him and that it being quick, being very smart and very fast. Um, and I absolutely adore it. Like this was one of my favorites. I love just how ridiculous this track is. And it's saying, you know, dare to be stupid, like be yourself. Don't worry about making mistakes. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. In fact, dare to be stupid. And I, I love that sentiment. I love that whole embrace who you are, regardless of how stupid it is. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a banger of a track if you haven't already heard it. All right, coming into the last three, uh, another one from the Alpocalypse. Again, that whole album is just littered with uh, amazing pastiches, but I want to at least recognize this one, and that is CNR in the style of the White Stripes. Again, I'm not a big, big fan of the White Stripes, but I feel like what makes the White Stripes very interesting and enjoyable to listen to Weird Al was able to distill into CNR, and CNR is just this big triumphant track of this individual CNR, and all the ridiculous and over-the-top things that this man has uh, either accomplished or is able to do, uh, and it's all being led by just a single guitar and a drum beat, much like uh, the White Stripes itself being just the um, uh, drums and the electric guitar. And I love the music, and I think that was one thing that Weird Al was able to really nail down on this track, is getting the catchiness of the White Stripes. Having that very simple guitar lick being the entire through line, without it ever becoming stale or repetitive or anything that's just, like, I don't want to listen to it because that is essentially the entire track. Being able to, like, nail that big oomph down was such a great uh, ability for him, so... Love that one. The final two we've got from the Bad Hair Day album, Colin in Sick in the style of Nirvana. Now, Weird Al had already parodied a Nirvana with Smells Like Nirvana, but I do think that this was much more of a homage to Kurt Cobain himself, because at this point, Kurt Cobain had passed, and yeah, I, I feel as if he really wanted to nail down the actual style of Nirvana because Smells Like Nirvana really was just that one big hit wonder that Nirvana left out and he wanted to kind of showcase some of the other ones. So this one's kind of in the same vein as like Lithium or Come As You Are and it really is once again showcasing the mundane day-to-day -day items of I'm just going to call in sick. I don't want to work today. I'm not feeling it all that much. I'm calling in a sick day. What can I do? And all those like very mundane things, like I'm gonna stare at the sun. I'm gonna burp Tupperware. You know, what could I, I could do anything. I'm invincible. And I'm just gonna do it sitting on my ass and not doing anything at all. And I just, I love that when Weird Al is able to, you know, do this kind of narrative story of the mundane in such a distilled way. You know, comedy really does shine the mirror back. And it's like, yeah, that's essentially a lot of day-to-day -day activities. Like I remember when I was in elementary school, getting viciously bullied and I didn't want to go to school. So I would feign sick. And, uh, what all I would do that day is watch daytime cartoons, you know, and that was my entire day. So yeah, Colin and sick. Absolutely love that one. And now we're going to get to the whole, like the track that made me want to do this from the beginning. Uh, I was listening to a lot of weird owl music lately. Just, it's been, it's been a rough time. And I think it's been a rough go for a lot of us. And this song came on and I realized that weird owl made a better version of this song than the original artist himself, which is ridiculous considering the original artist. And we're talking about Frank Zappa here and uh, his track Genius in France, which ends the um, Poodle Hat album. And this track, even though it does have Dweezil Zappa on the lead guitars in a couple of sections on here, um, it's the perfect Frank Zappa track. You know, the whole thing is like, this guy is stupid. You know, this guy is all these jokes of like, you're so stupid, you couldn't pour water out of a boot with instructions on a heel. You know, you're about as sharp as a bowling ball. Um, you know, and just it's, this song is half 
lining all those stupid jokes up with the big payoff of, but I'm a genius in France. Everybody loves me in France. And as I've gotten older, I'm starting to think, well, is this guy, is this just this guy's delusion of going over to France and everybody treating him very nicely because being in, you know, America, and if you're an idiot, you're scum of the earth. Like the worst crime a human can commit here in North America is being stupid, being wrong, or not being able to articulate your ideas properly. Whereas in Europe, there's not that much pressure to do so. So having this guy going over to France where it's like, you can be stupid, but you're still a human. You're still a person. We're gonna treat you like that. And like this first encounter of it being okay to be not the smartest cookie in the bunch just flips this guy's mentality over. He's just like, this is amazing. I'm going to live here. Like they're practically putting up a statue of me behind, like beside the Eiffel Tower because of how horrible I've been treated over in America. And that's like the big underlying joke here of Genius in France. And the music itself is top shelf Frank Zappa music. You know, this is stuff that we would heard from Chic Your Booty, Apostrophe, One Size Fits All, like everything from Frank Zappa's quirky, jazzy, rock and opposition styles. And it's one of the best Frank Zappa tracks that I've ever heard. And, you know, I've been in a really deep Frank Zappa mood as well, because those are kind of like the one two punches for me is Weird Al and Frank Zappa. No track really lives up to Genius in France in my mind that Frank Zappa has done outside of some of those more live show improv jazz sets that we had from like Hot Rats or Guitars or things like that. But in terms of like actual put down tracks, you know, I'm thinking of like the first half of Apostrophe. This is kind of top shelf. This is kind of like cream of the crop here. Uh, and it's amazing that it was Weird Al that did it. So those are my 10. Going really quickly, once again, we have They Might Be Giants from Everything You Know Is Wrong, uh, Germs with Nine Inch Nails, Skipper Dan with Reezer, Talk Soup and Waffle King with Peter Gabriel, Dog Eat Dog with Talking Heads, Mr. Propel and the B-52s, you Don't Love Me Anymore with James Taylor and Nicolette Larson. Um, Dare to be Stupid with Devo. CNR with White Stripes. Uh, Colin in Sick with Nirvana. And Genius in France from um, Frank Zappa. What were some that I missed? What were some that you love? One that I almost considered putting on here was Twister with the Beastie Boys, uh, but it was so short and so fun. And yeah, it's, it's, it's a delight. It's a delight. So there's my little bonus. There's my bonus 11. Weird Al songs, uh, Beastie Boys with Twister. What are some of your favorite pastiches from Weird Al? What are your favorite um, homages? I, I, I love the parodies, but really my, my <clears throat> the things that get me really excited are those pastiches, those homages. So let me know of your own favorite by commenting down below. And let me know what you thought about this list. How do you agree with it? How do you disagree with it? Let me know all about that by commenting down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know that this one is a little bit of a different one. Uh, covering Weird Al is something that I love to do, even though it's not necessarily in the wheelhouse of my channel. But I'm glad that you guys at least stuck around. And those few of you that watched, thank you so much as well for sticking to the end. So yeah, this is why you guys are definitely the best. You allow me to do things like that. So until next time, notes out.